Hey guys, I'm back for more. <laughs> What do you know? Every week, twice a week now is our commitment uh, on bringing content that will help you manage your QuickBooks Online. All right, so today we're gonna talk about cash transactions. What to do when you pay with other funds and how do you manage those transactions in QuickBooks Online, including income transactions. So here we go. Without much further ado, we're going to go straight to our sample account. Okay, first of all, when we have a client that um, pays with cash, so let's create a sales receipt. Okay, now remember that you can do an invoice and but i'm gonna do a sales receipt because you know we're gonna assume our, we already received the money so we're just gonna create an account customer all right so i am going to put here for september 1st okay i'm always sending it to payments to deposit keep in mind sales receipt we don't have to record the payment because it's already saying that it has a payment right gonna select a um, product here and I'm gonna put the money and um, we're gonna save and new so we're gonna create another one sales receipt customer again and put this for the fifth create another one Okay, and now we're gonna save and close. Okay, uh, I'm gonna create a couple of expenses with the cash account. So we're gonna do a plus new expense. We're gonna enter here. Now, last week we showed you how to do it from the receipt. Well, not last week, a few days ago. <laughs> And today we're gonna we're gonna do it as recording the expense without the receipt. Let's suppose you don't have a receipt. How do you do it? Yeah, you um, you want to go ahead and select the payee uh, vendor is what we have here. So now it's very important. See that it's sh uh, selecting the the a different account. You don't want this account because this was paid with personal funds. So we're gonna put cash here. And we're gonna put the date and it's saying that it's contract labor but maybe it's not maybe it's something else maybe it's um, uh, let's say business license and let's suppose that's how much I paid and we're gonna do another one so save a new okay let's do vendor again uh, once again cash account let's change the date and QuickBooks will try to put the account that you did last, use the account that you did last, and it's going to try to um, uh, uh, put whatever category you put on the last transaction. So if it's not, then you got to change it, okay? All right. Okay, great. Okay. Save and close. And let's suppose that, um, all right, so we send those transactions to cash. Let's suppose that, you know, if you want to put some cash on hand account, we can go ahead and click on bank deposit. And you want to change this to cash, by the way. Okay, and there are some transactions already waiting there for us. So we're going to deposit those transactions. Uh, and then we're gonna create another deposit okay so we have those transactions that we created those income transactions sent to undeposited funds so we're gonna cancel here so in order to record those deposit plus new bank deposit and I'm gonna change because this is not the right bank this was deposit this was just cash it was never deposit in the checking account or if it was Okay, if you did deposit on a checking account, I'll show you how to record those as well. Okay, so we, we want to select one transaction at a time because I want to keep track of what happened uh, when, uh, what happened when it happened, <laughs> if that makes sense to you. So basically, you know, this one happened on the 1st of September. I wanted to show it for the 1st of September. So that's why I'm going to do one at a time. 
okay so we're gonna save new here so we're gonna record another deposit here and uh, this is for the fifth and I'm gonna save save new and let's suppose that I just put some cash I went to the bank my personal bank I got some cash and I put it on my cash account so I'm gonna record that as well uh, here receive from I'm gonna put Claudia so and then the account is owner's investment okay because that's money I'm putting out of my and I'm put, putting a thousand dollars because I want to pay some people uh, and some bills and I want to have some change so I'm putting a thousand dollars on the account okay all right so now oh yeah another thing you can use the cash account as well is for tips you know let's suppose you receive cash tips in and then you pay your employees from the cash account so you know you, maybe sometimes you go to your bank account get some cash and give it to them so this is how you're gonna record it all right so here we go now we're gonna go to the cash account and we're gonna see what's going on here so transaction chart of accounts we can reconcile the chat cash account by the way here it is and we're gonna see all the transactions that we recorded here so we recorded the uh, a few other transactions as well so we have ace ace hardware um, no actually I can start for the year so let's suppose it's just you know starting in August I have the little Greek 43246 and I have a, a few customer payments a couple of customer payments and here's my investment of a thousand dollars and then I had the UPS I had a couple of transactions here and this is the balance on my cash account if this is the right balance you can go ahead and reconcile and when you reconcile you want to put the amount that is in the account if it is not right you can you can go back and make make a change here so let's suppose that um, we're you know you you took some money out of the cash account and use this for personal personal um, purposes right um, and uh, and that's the difference between what's on your cash drawer and what is recorded in QuickBooks so let's suppose that $200 is the difference whatever way you use it but if it's not business related you want to record that you can create a transfer because it's very simple and I'm gonna transfer money out of the cash account and let's suppose that it is personal so I'm just gonna put owners owner's equity owner's draw okay and i'm gonna say it was two hundred dollars and I, I gotta keep i can keep this date that's fine and i'm gonna save and close okay so by recording this voila this account will update and there it is okay now my account is matching this is the right amount so now i can go ahead and reconcile oh wait a minute Five ten thirty four, yeah. You gotta remember that number because you gotta write it down here. And I can put the date. Let's suppose you know, as September. Uh, today's date, September seventh. Okay. And I wanna, I wanna make sure I select all the transactions because we want a zero difference. And if there is a difference here from prior period, you can record it as an equity account as a journal entry that's one way for you to do it okay um, and then once you write down the difference because we know that everything that happened this year is fine and by the way you can use all these headings to see all the transactions that are um, relevant right so let's suppose that something happened um, last last year so you can record this to uh, bring this up to date so let's duplicate this page very quickly we're gonna do a journal entry to update our beginning balance from our cash account okay we're gonna do a journal entry 
and then I'm going to say that I'm going to deposit in cash for the difference $800. Actually, we have more payments than expense so it's the other way around so it's nev negative means that you have more payments than expense so credit and here let's suppose I'm gonna put honors equity and we can put it up to retain earnings as well if if um, if this is for a prior year and you want to document that. So I'm gonna put as January 1st because we don't wanna change anything that happened prior to uh, your current accounting period. Um, and then on the description, you can say exactly prior year uh, balance discrepancy or balance adjustment, whatever you wanna call. And you wanna put on both boxes here. Okay, keep in mind with a journal entry you need a credit and a debit okay always a credit and a debit so we're gonna save and close this and we're gonna go back into the cash account and uh, we should be able to reconcile that so I'm adjusting the beginning balance by adjusting the beginning balance we know that everything else is correct so we're gonna finish now okay you can add the attachment if you have some kind of uh, records of your cash account you want to make sure that you attach those okay now um if you pay tips uh let's suppose you pay tips to your uh to your employees out of your cash account how to record that so let's you know we let's suppose that today i will go ahead and give some tips cash cash tips to my employees and we're going to record that as a journal entry I'm going to put the date, uh, whatever date that this happened, let's say September 7th. All right, you can change the journal number, whatever the name that you want to put here. And I am going to say that I'm taking money out of my cash account, so we're going to credit it. When I credit, kind of counting into it, too, right? Because <laughs> when I credit, I'm taking money out. I'm taking $300 out of the cash account, and I'm debiting the TIPS account. The TIPS account is a liability account where you record um, your TIPS liability. So we don't have here, so we have to create one. But let's suppose that I do because, you know, keep in mind this is just a simple account, but in order for you to put it towards um, TIPS, it has to be a liability in there. And for most of you, you do in order to pay. It, uh, that tip liability you have to have that liability and sometimes it comes from an app if you're if you are integrated with with Square or another app that brings that, that information over or sometimes uh, you can just manually record them right so other current liability and we're gonna go to tips payable or undistributed tips okay and I can put undistributed tips so couple of things to know about the undistributed tips it's other current liability because you're gonna pay it within the year um, and when I am debiting it's a it's a liability it means that you're holding it for your uh, for your employees so if you're distributing if you're gonna distribute your tips you want to put it on the liability account because that's not your money that's not sales so Tips that are to be paid to your employees, it's a liability until you pay it. When you pay, you want to remove that liability out of your books because you're saying that you're paying. And that's what we are recording right now. So I'm taking $300 out of, un, uh, uh, out of the cash account and paying the employees on distributed tips. So we're going to save and close. And we're going to see what happens to the cash account. Now it's going to go down by $300. So if we view register here, you see it's going to go down by $300. But now I have a negative balance. So I have to... Oh, oh yes. Okay. 
All right, so the difference here on the beginning balance is because uh, we had a few things that were reconciled, okay? So once, uh, once you record here, you're going to see, and you want to keep the cash account at whatever balance is on your cash account, okay? That's, that's the most important thing, is to keep that uh, at whatever balance you have on your cash drawer. All right, and if there is any adjustment to be made, you can make adjustment with the journal entry. Uh, and everything on the cash account is, um, is managed manually. So you have to record all those transactions manually to be able to, uh, to match everything. All right, so that is it. So let's go back here, okay? Hopefully this was useful. So we, we talk about how to manage cash account, cash bank account or petty cash, whatever you want to call. So when you pay bills, when you receive income um, and you never deposit into your check, checking account, you want to use a cash cash bank account. That cash bank account is not, inte oh, it's not integrated with QuickBooks, of course, because it's not a real bank account. It's just uh, where you record your income and your expenses and you can, you can, reconcile the account just like you reconcile any other account you can adjust the balance if there is a difference or discrepancy from prior years you can do that with a journal entry and at the end of the day you want the balance to match whatever is in your cash drawer all right if there is a negative amount that means you need to put some money in there <laughs> and you can do it with a journal entry that's just that's just the way it is so that's just how you do it okay so hopefully this was useful if you have any question write down below and i will answer right away <laughs> if you want us to cover another subject also write down below now for many of you who have not subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel we come back twice a week with new content and new information on QuickBooks Online for you to stay up to date and also to be able to solve all those daily problems or answer those daily questions when you're working on QuickBooks Online. Um, that's the only thing that I ask. Just subscribe. Subscribe to our channel. A very small minority. And when you subscribe, it makes a huge difference. I want to make sure that I am covering those things you want me to cover and I want to make sure that I'll make your life easier on QuickBooks Online by teaching and sharing information. So share with your friends, share with your family, share with the world and be back next time. <laughs> Until next time, keep on smiling.